Well guys, welcome back to the nest. Hope you're all keeping well. Sorry, I've been taking so long. I've had I've had college stuff going on. I had to create a show in college and then I had to do my device piece. But I'm back now. Um you guys know I take a rest every time I finish a year. You know, I take a few days and then we move on to the next era. Tonight we are beginning in 1974, as promised. And tonight's movie is something I enjoyed very much, and I'm gonna have to put a disclaimer in the description again. Because this is a movie where the humour you would get away with back then, but you wouldn't get away with now. And I'm sorry if I offend anyone in case I talk about it. This movie is Blazing Saddles. It is directed by a man named Mel Brooks. Now I've been told to keep a close eye out for that name. It is a mixture of a western and a comedy. Distributed by Warner Brothers. Now I did forget to say in the Exorcist reaction that um, not only is it Disney's 100th anniversary, it's also... Warner Brothers 100th anniversary so happy birthday to the two biggest movie companies in the world <laughs> just imagine Bugs Bunny and Mickey Mouse spending all this time to create new content for us anyway yes this movie is a mixture of a western and a comedy now I gotta say I didn't really understand it at first well I did understand it right up until the very end I'll get to that in a wee minute but it is set in 1874 during the in the Wild West, so it is. It starts off with this guy named Bart and his friends fixing, creating a new railroad for a town named Rockridge, and they are treated so badly. They try singing Western songs in order to cheer themselves up. Camp Town ladies, sing this song, do da do da. Swing low, sweet chariot. Coming for to carry me home. The typical ones. <laughs> yeah, the one we're all the ones we're all familiar with. Great classics. As punishment, they have to um, Bart and his friend have to um, go on this cart. Unfortunately, there's nothing worse when you're out in the desert and you come across quicksand and you start to sink. Not only is quicksand the killer, it's also the sun. You'll get badly dehydrated. You'll become hungry and you'll die a heat stroke. And they don't even want to save Bart and his friend. They only save the cart. <laughs> How selfish can you get? Luckily, Bart manages to pull himself out at the right moment. The main antagonist of this movie is a guy called Headley Lamar. <laughs> I tell you what, I was very nearly about to get his wrong. That's a wrong get his name wrong. That was a running gag in the movie. Getting his everyone getting his name wrong. Hammersley, it's Headley. He's the director general of Rockridge. And I do love his executioner. He just kills whoever he wants in any... It doesn't matter what way they are. Like, for example, some guy's sitting up on his horse. I <sighs> wonder if the horse will make it out of life. <laughs> because of his bravery, they decide to appoint Bart as the new sheriff. I gotta say, I keep forgetting that this is a comedy because I was wondering, even though it's set in 1874, he has a lot of accessories, such as a Gucci bag. <laughs> I actually wonder how, how long Gucci has been operating for. There is also an orchestra just playing the soundtrack. I wonder what you need. <laughs> I gotta say, I really enjoyed this movie. It was so funny. It does deal with racism and stereotypes, but, you know, in a funny way. I'm not going to talk about it too much because I know YouTube's not going to be happy with me, you know, directly talking about it. But Bart has a new job as the sheriff. Of course, it generates hostility. And in order to save himself, he pretends to take himself hostage. Do as he says! Please! <laughs> Looks like the people of Rockridge aren't as bright as you think. Inside his office. I also realised that the sheriff office is a actually has a lot of jail cells in them during the Wild West. I noticed that whenever I watched the Dollars Trilogy with Clint Eastwood. Hmm. Guess that's just how it went in those days. But in the jail cell, he meets a prisoner named Jim, who is played by Gene Wilder. Gene Wilder is the guy who played Wally Wonka in Wally Wonka and the Chocolate Factory. I love his witty sense of humour in this movie. You know, he's still, he's still pretty much Wally Wonka in the Wild West, so he is. But very, also still very good with kids. He tells his backstory. Like, he was a great gunslinger, but now he's just an alcoholic. Every time I eat, I feel sick. He's just lost his way because a bastard little kid shot me in the ass. 
a lot more funnier than um, Bart's backstory because he was him and his family were just in a coach led by the natives. The thing I love about Headley is, you know, he's such... He's like a mother towards his friend Taggart, who you saw at the beginning. And he's such a big baby whenever he gets his head bashed in by Bart. Don't mess with Bart. There, there. I'm sure it was only horseplay. And he, he's out camping with his, with his team. And they're having supper that consists of a small roll of bread and beans. I knew the fart was going to come on as soon as I saw the beans. <laughs> that, that shit would just kill you. And I'm, I tell you what, I'm actually surprised none of those guys actually shit themselves. <laughs> to Mongo. Now Mongo was this big, strong guy who's dim-witted but powerful. And he has been sent out by Taggart to kill Bart. <laughs> I wonder how this is going to go down. <laughs> you do know this is actually serious because it's a comedy. Even though it's set in the West, it's a comedy. It's not as serious as the Dollars Trilogy. That's, I think this is what the whole point of this movie is. It's a parody of the Dollars Trilogy. I loved in this movie is the cows. Everywhere you go, you see cows in the bar, cows in the church, in the courtroom. They had to be some very well-trained cows. I did hear that um, a few years ago in Australia, there were emus who were actually banned from coming into a bar because of her behavior. You shouldn't even let an emu in your bar in the first place. They're wild animals. All they're gonna do is just ruin everything and cause shit for, for each other. <laughs> there are birds that cannot fly. Get it right! Anyway, back to the story. Yeah, I I, I just love the running gags in this movie. You know, Headley, people get this name wrong, and the cows you see everywhere. But Mongo is actually stoppable. There's a lot of crime in Rockridge, I have to say. I did feel sorry for the old lady getting beat up. I've never seen so much cruelty in my days. Why do that to a poor wee old lady? Well, later on in the movie, you don't really have as much sympathy as you did for her before. Ever later on in the movie, you do find out that, that um, Jim is actually quite a great shot. So he is. He's the fastest hand in the West. In the West. <laughs> Steady as a rock. <laughs> No, I couldn't shoot that fast. However, I do... I wonder how he does that. He must be the most best trained gunslinger in all the West, so he is. I will say, I do have so much respect for um, Bart. He develops a plan for Headley. Headley is already forming his own posse that consists of every criminal in the country. Like bandits, motorcycle gangs... Thieves, soldiers, you name it. He has everything. This is probably the best plan I've ever heard of. Bart and Jim decide to create a false, that's right, a fake version of Rockridge out in the wilderness, in front of the canyons. <laughs> and hopefully they will arrive and not know the difference. They get closer and closer. They're buying it. They fall for the toll booth. And then a huge fight breaks out. Boom! And then you see the horse. Yeah. I do hope no animals were actually harmed during this movie because you do see a horse. Like it gets punched in the face by Mongo and it just drops. These are obviously very well trained animals, you know, the cows and the horses. What do you have to do? This is probably the most confusing part of the movie. This is what I was talking about. Fourth wall break during the fight where it just moves on to the big dance studio, the Rifter studio, and the Warner Brothers land, when people are getting terse. And it looks like Headley was putting on a fake accent the whole time. And he tries to escape by actually watching the film by buying a student ticket. Seriously? As soon as he sees Bart and Jim coming for him, he steps outside, tries to start a duel, but Bart shots him right in the dick. Bart really doesn't take shit from anyone, from the looks of it. And in the end, you know, Bart does realise he has to go on to better stuff. I want justice. Oh, shit. Jim decides to accompany him as well, because he just admits that he's off nowhere special. But then you see the limousines. Instead of riding your horse into the sunset, like you usually see in Western movies, he rides right off into the sunset in his limousine with his carriers. So it looks like, along with the Gucci's, 
His horse, his jail, his orchestra, he has a limo. He's bound to have a mansion somewhere. Hopefully Jim will become his partner, like you see in Butch Cassidy and the Sundance Kid. If you know what I mean, like, you know, a partner in crime, you... Maybe Jim will become a new sheriff? A deputy sheriff? You never know. But yeah, I really did enjoy, you know, Gene Wilder in, in this movie. It was good to see him again after Willy Wonka in the Chocolate Factory. Quite a coincidence. He also starred in another comedy movie that was directed by Mel Brooks, named Young Frankenstein. I don't know if I'll watch it in 1974, to be honest. I actually don't know if I will watch this movie at all. Look, I don't want to see Frankenstein as a spoof, if you know what I mean. Like, I do love Frankenstein. As you know, it was the first ever movie I reacted to on this channel. And it was great fun. But I don't know. Just taking up too much time, I guess. But I did find out that was another big hit with audiences. Mel Brooks was really becoming comedy. And he did push some boundaries back in those days. But that was the humour they were used to in those days. I do hope I don't offend anyone with this movie. Um, but it was a great start to 1974. Give it a 10 out of 10. I did hear from a, from a few friends that it was probably the best comedy ever written. <laughs> it was definitely stupid. But in a funny way. Um, we'll just have to wait and see what's next in the 1974 era. Gotta say, I am enjoying these tours. You know, year by year. You know, I did check the set list. This set list looks okay. And, you know, it was a great start. Blazing Saddles. 1974. Really takes the cake. But enough of that. I will thank you guys for watching. I shall see you in the next video. Don't forget to leave a like. Comment what you would like to see next. Subscribe. Turn on all notifications. Tell your friends. I shall see you guys in the next video. Love you all to death.